Hey guys, this is Learning with Michelle, and today we are going to be doing questions 27 through 30 of the 2022 Grade 3 Mathematics Day exam. So, let's get started. For number 27, it says, A pet store has four fish tanks of the same size. A worker puts 10 liters of water in each fish tank. Okay, each fish tank. What is the total number of liters of water the worker puts in all of the fish tanks? So, um, basically, as you see, I've marked up the, the question. I've underlined all of the important numbers. I've circled the keywords like same size and each fish tank and all of the fish tanks. I underlined what the question was asking for over here, and I put a box around the units. Try to do this when you're taking the actual state exam and when you're doing your practice exams, of course. So to solve this problem, it says that there are four equal sized fish tanks. So one, two, three, four. And there are 10 liters of water in each fish tank. 10, 10, 10, and 10. So there are two ways to solve this problem. You can either, oops, let me just erase that. So you can either add 10 four times, 10, 10, 10, and 10, add that, you get 40. Or if you know your multiplication tables, you could just do 10 times four, since there's an equal number of liters of water in each fish tank, 10 times four equals 40 as well. So you get the same answer both times. And um, make sure to box your answer. Circle should be like parts of like you're solving. I mean, when you're solving the problem, circle should be the main numbers that you should use in the next step or numbers to keep in mind. But boxing means your it's your final answer. So the answer is D for number 27. Moving on to number to, I mean, sorry. Moving on to the next question. Number 28, which array represents three times six? So an array is basically a drawing with um, rows and columns. These are rows and these are columns. Let me just erase that. Wait, let me just erase all this. I'll re-explain I'll re-explain what rows and columns are. Um so basically this is a row and this is a column. Rows and columns are used in arrays to represent the multiplication question. And the number of boxes that you have after it's done represents the final answer. So make sure you wrote that down, by the way, rows and columns. So, which array represents three times six? So there should be three rows and six columns or three columns and six rows. It can be either way because of the commutative property of multiplication. There are one, two, three, four. Four, four rows. Four is not either of these answers. I mean either of these factors. So A is not the correct answer for B. It shows one, two, three, three rows, and one, two, three, four, five, five columns. That's three times five, so B is not the answer either. For C, it shows one, two, three, three rows, and one, two, three, four, five, six columns. So this could be a possible answer. And for D, it shows one, two, three, four, four rows, 
and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven columns. That's gonna give us an answer that's too big. So C is the correct answer for number 28. Moving on to question 29. So it says, which number pattern uses the rule add three? So basically number patterns are sequences of numbers that have a certain rule to them, like two, four, six, eight. In this number pattern, you have the rule, you have the rule um, add two because every single number you're adding to, it's gonna be two more than the previous number. So to add three for that rule, you need to make sure that every number is three more than the previous number, bef than the previous number. So let's start off with number, with letter A, two, six, 18, 48. 2 plus 4 equals 6. You're not adding 3, and these numbers don't add 3 either, so A is incorrect. For B, it shows 3, 7, 11, and 15. And then adding on. 3 plus 4 equals 7. This is already wrong because it does not add 3. 3, 9, 27, 54. 3 plus 6 equals 9. We're not adding 3. It's already incorrect. That leaves us with D, but let's just check. 4, 7, 10, 13, adding on. 4 plus 3 equals 7. 7 plus 3 equals 10. 10 plus 3 equals 13, and then so on. This does follow the rule add 3 because every number is 3 more than the number before it. So D is the correct answer. Wait, let me just make sure you can see the problem. Okay, there it is. So for question 30, it shows, I mean, for question 30, it says which fraction is less than one fourth. So for this, we need to use equivalent fractions, or we could just compare the numerator if the denominator is the same. So two fourths. Two fourths is greater than one fourth because, well, this is one fourth and this is two fourths. There are two parts shaded in instead of one, so this is more. So it's not less than one fourth. Four fourths. Four fourths is like everything shaded. It's a lot more than one fourth, so B is not the answer either. For C, it says one third. So to compare this, we need to do equivalent fractions. One third. Oh, to do equivalent fractions, you basically need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number. And then you have to multiply the other fraction by a different number. So that way they both have the same denominator. So you can multiply three by four and one by four to get four over 12. One third equals four over 12. However, for one fourth, you can multiply four by three to get a common denominator of 12 and then multiply the numerator by the same thing, three. So one fourth equals three twelfths. Four twelfths is greater than three twelfths. So C is not the answer either. That leaves us with the D, but let's just check over our previous, I mean, let's just check over our one sixth to see if it is less than one fourth. So, over here we have one sixth, then we have one fourth. You can multiply 
one fourth by six. I mean, you can just multiply the numerator and denominator of one fourth by six to get six over 24. Then you could multiply the numerator and denominator of one sixth by four to also get a common denominator of 24. Six times four equals 24 and one times four equals four. One sixth equals four twenty fourths, and one fourth equals six twenty fourths. Let me just erase it so you can get like a better visual of what's going on here. One sixth equals four twenty fourths, and one fourth equals six twenty fourths. Four twenty fourths is less than six twenty fourths because it's two pieces less shaded. So one sixth is our answer. Okay guys, so that's all for today. I hope you found this video useful and please make sure to like and subscribe. Bye.